Welcome to Paula today. You are going to be richly blessed today as we talk about the power of relationship, trust, loyalty. Have you ever gone through a heartbreak or distrust or broken trust, we should say, or disloyalty? Any of those you do not want to miss today because one of the most prolific authors, one of the most profound revelators is with us today. He is a dear friend who covered me during a season that God just sent one of the greatest gifts into my life. Little did I know that when I would find my safe haven, that I thought I was being assigned to help someone and to serve their ministry and to serve them, that God would have a place for me where I would really cultivate and keep, protect the gift of God on the inside of me. Um, this man of God and his family He's a patriarch, he's a revelator, he's apostolic, he governs, he guards, he guides. He knows what it is to be profound in almost every way and it is my privilege to bring him to you today. Welcome to the program, Pastor Rick Hawkins. Thank Pastor. you so Good much, you. Pastor Paula, appreciate it. So we'll reach out with that little handshake. Yeah, exactly. I know that's the little, that's the little handshake. <laughs> that's the right. little handshake. So you wrote a book on the inner circle, yes. which is, and there's not no one in my opinion that is more qualified um, to write on relationships and all of us desire. Relationship is about, am I loved unconditionally? Am I safe with you? Am I accepted unconditionally? Because no matter how much substance, things I have, nice yeah. car, nice house, nice, I don't really feel my significance until I have that inner circle fortified. Right, right. Until I'm in a family. And family doesn't necessarily mean, you know, husband, wife, two kids. It is. Uh, literally family comes from the root of serving, yeah. but it's a place that I have a protective place to nurture, to grow, mm -hmm. um, to be loved, to be accepted, and to be safe. Yeah. And, and you get it more than anyone, patriarch, matriarch, sons and daughters, and you write in Inner Circle several things that we're gonna talk about. And let me just give you an example of some of the chapters that we're gonna discuss, and you don't wanna miss this at any time you can call the toll-free number, and I'll get you Pastor Rick's book, on inner circle, how to build relationships, um, your covenant relationships, why you went through the brokenness, all the different things, along with my four CD series on creating healthy relationships. It's the life skills and life tools for $25 or more at any time during the program. But we're gonna cover the power of next influence, the power of agreement, covenant, oh brother, where art thou, friendship, a life in a cave, brokenness, Facing the battle, courage, following the king, passionate purpose, possessing your territory, de determination, and then building a dynasty, unity. Let's talk about how a friend becomes a brother. Okay. First of all, I would like to say um, concerning the book, I'm sure every author would like to sit here and say, this is a divine revelation I got, and, and all of this is just divinely inspired it's going to cause you to be victorious in every area of your life. But this book is not penned just from revelation, but also tribulation and mm -hmm. trial and hardship. Because I, as, as much as you gave those accolades and everything and affirming me, I, I really appreciate that. But I do not consider myself to be a champion of, of relationships. This book is written out of as much as I did wrong Mm -hmm. as much as I've learned from God. Right. And so uh, I don't want to portray an image that I've got this relationship thing down. So this is learning both from education and also just life experiences and doing it wrong as well as doing it right. And you, you went immediately to Proverbs 17, 17. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a, a proverb is a superior mental action using vocabulary or dialogue that ultimately becomes a principle. And that principle says that a friend loves at all times, but a brother is born in adversity. And one version says for adversity. Right. So it has this graduating etymology attached to it, this principle does, that a friend will love you at all times, but you really don't know who your brothers are until you go through adverse seasons. Right. Until you face adversity. Um, someone once said that some people, some friends are like shadows. They stay real close to you as long as the sun is shining. Right. right. But the moment you walk into darkness, you can't find them. They disappear. Um, someone else said, and I thought this was, this was really cool, and that someone else was actually me. There's this quote from the book that says, 
Um, your friends will know you in prosperity, but you will know your brothers in adversity. Right. And um, so you, you really, do, I, I really did not know who those people that were my inner circle would be until I went through a season right. of, of darkness in my own destiny. And uh, when I came out the other side, I saw who was standing around me. And that really helped me to decide and to decipher, discern who God had really assigned to my life. And you can't expect all people to stay with you when you go through those dark seasons because in, invariably and inevitably, um, you're going to hurt some people that are right. close to you. And I think sometimes we're asking a little bit too much of people to stay close to us when maybe you've hurt them or you disappointed them. And uh, we have to learn to be mature enough to go on beyond that and continue to grow. So it's a two-edged sword. It's yeah. not just others loyalty to us but when we violate loyalty yeah. and trust to them yeah and I've done that and and it's it's that's a horrible feeling so the then the caveat to that is how do how do we reconcile all that and all you can do is really extend yourself right right and and offer your apologies and remorse and all those things and then you kind of leave it there and then it put the old axiom is it puts the ball in their court Right. Sad to say, it's, that's the way it is. Right. And um, you know, I've I've lived through that. I've I've lived, and it's interesting. All my books that I've written somehow relate to the idea of relationships. Right. And it's I, I just think it's a thing that I've always battled with, but I enjoy. You know, I love it, but then I struggle with it. In my opinion, I've watched you up close and personal. Yeah. You're, the, you're an amazing father. I mean, the relationship you, not just with your natural children, but also your spiritual sons and daughters. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think all of us do. We all struggle in our humanity and our connection and our, you know, community. But right. it's the greatest desire because that's what God created. Sure. Community. It's, it's the place of really growth. It's the place of maturity. And, and I think that means that there has has to be, you know, if I'm going to grow in something, I'm going to be stretched in it. Sure. I'm going to be challenged sure. in it. And you give such great insight in this book because yeah. you really help us understand. I'm a person that likes to, I can't figure it all out, but I like to go, you're like, you want to categorize everything. But right. I do like to kind of understand. And you talk about the different levels of loyalty. Uh -huh. And that's important because sometimes some situations in Amber's floor directing right now, but she asked a great question. She said, does your inner circle change? Yeah. And how do you know when it's a new season? Yeah. You know, and, and, the, and it does. Your inner circle will change. And I, if you want to go into that loyalty dialogue, we can do so. Um, it, it's one of my, my in, most enjoyable subjects. Right. It's the life of David. And David was a man of many passions. You know, he had a passion for friends, he had a passion for music, he had a passion for war, he had a passion for women. Right. He, he, you know, he, so when you look at David, you see all these passions in this one guy. And um, so when he is anointed king, he, of course he has to begin this trial and error of selecting people to be close to him. And um, ultimately he went to his family. Right. And when you look at Zeruiah's sons, um, Joab and Abishai and Asahel, it was his nephews, and he selected them to be what would be referred to as his bodyguard. Right. And they represent three levels of relationship. When you, when you look at um, Joab, Joab is loyal to David to the point of if anyone even thought of harming David, it was no negotiation, it was no compromise immediately take him out. You know, he took Abner out, he took Mesa out, he, he, just, he would just take people out. And I began to look at Joab and I thought, man, he's so loyal to David, but he's got this issue, and what is this guy's issue? How can you be so close in relationship with King David? You know his heart, you know his mind, you know his vision, right. you know his passion. And, and man, did David's mighty men understand his passion or what? Right, They right. understood this leader, right? So jo I, I finally came to the conclusion after reading it and studying it that Joab was loyal to David. And this is going to hit you. This is going to hit people watching. As long as his position was secure. There you go. Right. 
But when Abner showed up with his same gifts, his same talents, his same ability, it was a threat to him. It was a conditional loyalty then. Yeah, it was a conditional loyalty. He's loyal as long as his position is secure. And watch, watch what happens when, of course, uh, Adonijah is going to play a big role right. in Joab shifting loyalty when David is in his deathbed. Right. And Solomon is going to be the successor. And he made a bad choice because he thought one person would have his position in mind more than another person. Right. And he didn't follow the succession that David had already preordained that this is the way this thing's going to go down because he was worried about himself. So you want me to keep going because yeah, I do. In fact, we got to take a quick break and we're going to come back. Okay. But I want you to get up and call the toll-free number right now because it's in the book, and there are people that are in your life. My my wheels are spinning right now because yeah. I can talk to you forever about yeah. this. There are people in your life, and it's kind of to me like the goat, sheep, and wolves. You just you recognize what sheep are like, what goats are like, and what wolves are like. Well, it's like you recognize that there are people that, that are going to be loyal but they are loyal conditionally. So yeah. if their position gets in jeopardy, and with that knowledge, you said something on our last program about relationships, that you build them with one piece of your heart at a time. Right, right. And so if I know that, um, then I'm not just vulnerable that you can abuse and misuse me, because I understand that if circumstance were ever to create an unsecured position for you, you're going to be disloyal to me. And knowing that, then I know how do I relate, how do, what do I do? And boy, that's in jobs, that's in church, that's in families. Right. You know, that's, that's everywhere. So we're going to be right back and talk about it, but you need to call awesome. the toll-free number. It's all in the book. Yeah. And you can get Pastor Rick Hawkins' book. Also go to rickhawkins.org, Pastor Rick Hawkins' book, The Inner Circle, along with my four CD series, $25, Pastor Rick, wow. for four CDs on all the background of what relationships, and it's my passion, as you know, of yeah. understanding and not only the biblical and what does the Bible have to say, but also the psychological and background of why do we do what we do in the ABCs, and I pull it all together, Strong. put it together with Inner Circle, $25, your best ministry gift, and I'll get this right off to you, Pastor Rick, and I'll be right back. God has a perfect plan for your life and a role for you in His kingdom. But to attain your destiny, you need the help of godly co-workers and loved ones. Now discover the steps to developing solid relationships you can trust in Pastor Rick Hawkins' insightful book, The Inner Circle. A friend will love you at all times, but you really don't know who your brothers are until you go through adverse seasons. Learn to access the power of next through covenant relationships when you order Pastor Rick Hawkins' book, The Inner Circle. Plus, also receive Pastor Paula White's life transforming four CD series, Creating Healthy Relationships, both for your ministry gift of $25 or more. Call toll free, write to Paula White Ministries or log on to paulawhite.org and discover the keys to creating a godly inner circle of people in your life today. I'm back with Pastor Rick Hawkins and I hope that you called the toll-free number, written the P.O. box, or gone to the website so that you can get the inner circle. It is a phenomenal book, Establishing Covenant Relationships, Understanding Brokenness, I mean, it's all about trust, loyalty, friendships, and relationships. And also creating healthy relationships. My four CD set on the life skill, the tools, what you need. Your ministry gift of $25 or more. Everything from the power of agreement, the power of next, courage. It's all in here. One of the best books ever. And I devour. I read two or three books a week. And I've read this book, just devoured it several times. You need to get up and call that toll-free number. Now, we're in the middle of loyalty. Yeah. So we talked about the first becomes disloyal when their position is jeopardized. Right. What's the second level of loyalty? Uh, when you just track the brothers, uh, you, you go to the next one, which is Abishai. Mm -hmm. And I'll just touch on him. We'll move, we'll move very quickly to the last one where we need to rest for a moment. But when you look at Abishai, he is the guy that represents blind loyalty. Mm. In other words, he, uh, for the sake of loyalty, he will close his eyes to certain things. 
Uh, there was no doubt that he knew what was going on with Joab as his brother and was uh, w wanted to close his eyes so he put something over his eyes so he didn't have to see it. He didn't see it, he had to talk, to talk about it. So he followed David through, through blind loyalty, including the killing of Uriah. Right. And uh, so he, he had an opportunity to really say something, step in, but he didn't do it. And he, and he followed David through blind loyalty. And, it, you know, his life is an interesting dynamic in the cave. We can get to that some other time. But I want to take you to Asahel because Asahel uh, represents true loyalty in that he fought for what was right but died early. Now watch what happens. He's quickly replaced, and now David, for the first time, is going to reach outside of his family. Hmm. This is not a nephew. This isn't a cousin. He, he reaches to someone's son that was with him in the cave of Adullam. Right. And this guy's name is Benaiah. Right. You know Benaiah. He's the one who went down into the pit on a snowy day, killed a lion, killed two Moabite right. um, men that looked like lions. Um, so he's got this history of victories. Uh, but Benaiah replaces Asahel. Why? Because David saw in Benaiah what he saw in his dad. Wow. Which was true loyalty. Now watch, when David is on his deathbed. If you remember, they're trying mm -hmm. to make him warm. They're doing everything he can. We won't get into yeah, everything they Yeah, they're throwing they young virgins in yeah. his bed to see to, if he's to, alive. See, see if, it's Paula see White get, today. <laughs> see if he got heat. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he, he does not. So now David starts telling Solomon, this needs to happen, this needs to happen. So when he gets ready to, he, David in his deathbed starts remembering people who have done things, right? So he says, send Benaiah. He trusts Benaiah to deal with, and guess who the first one is? Joab. Wow. He says, go find Joab and take him out because Joab had allied himself with something that was diametrically opposed to what David's desires were, right? right? So guess where Benaiah finds Joab? At the altar. Right. Remember, he's holding on to the horns of the yep. altar. Well, Benaiah comes back and tells David, I can't kill him. He's in the horns of the altar. He's holding on to the horns of the altar. Right. And David says, that's where he needs to be taken out. He said, take him out, holding on to the horns of the altar. Because Joab was in a tizzy. He's trying to get this thing fixed. And he, he's not sure how to do it, but he had violated David to a place. And David knew if he did not extinguish Mo Joab, Joab was going to be a problem to Solomon. Right, right. So Benaiah goes in and he takes him out in the altar. Now watch this. That's true loyalty. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Remember when David had issues with Saul. Really, Saul had issues with David. Yeah, yeah. And David went into that cave. Right. And he cut the robe. corner of his robe off and he came out. And all of David's mighty men were in the crevices of that cave. They were watching David. David could have killed Saul. Right. I'm confident of this. He did not take Saul out because it was in the public. And let me tell you something, Pastor Paula. If we've made mistakes in this last two decades or the last generation of Christianity as we know it, it is this problem right here. We have dealt with our stuff on public forums, in the media. It had no business getting into the hands of those people. Kill but blood-bought, sanctified people violated the loyalty and the cause of Christ and gave our matters to the world. Right, right. And the world, we didn't even have to kill each other. The world killed us. Right. And in essence, we we're killing ourselves. There's stuff that we have dealt with that's supposed to be handled in the altar. David left an example to his men. I could kill this man, but who am I to touch God's anointed in this place? That's so strong. Yeah. That's so strong. I'm sorry. Strong. I, I could go on and no, on No, no, no. Keep it. going. Because I get passionate about it. I just see that we as the leaders in the body of Christ, and, and I've been as guilty as anyone else. We, we have hurt each other with our mouths, talking about people's past and their history, and we won't release them from a season, and a season doesn't define your life. Right. Come on. Right. Get the tag off of people. They went through a bad season. That's not who they are. That's what they did. It's not only that, but and, and it's all in the book. You need to get up and call yeah. the toll-free number yeah. right now. Write the P.O. box so I can get you the book in the four-tape series. But I'm thinking, and I'm going to bring what you said down to 
a okay. a very practical. It's like he, he here because the Old Testament's type and shadow. It Absolutely. shows us the pattern. Yeah. So we deal with things at the altar. We deal. We kill the in issue the house. in the house. Right. We deal with it God's way. And I'm thinking about okay. The family is the only other divine um, institution orchestrated by God, yes. like the church. So I'm sitting here in a practical way while you're talking, thinking. You're, you know, I know people's mind are thinking church, they're thinking different levels. I'm thinking the woman watching right now. Okay. She gets in a fight with her husband. Mm -hmm. She takes it outside of the divine orchestrated. She takes it to her girlfriend. Yeah. She takes it to her mother, right. which is 10 times worse because right. she's gonna go back in two days and you're, she's in covenant with that man. Right. Sooner or later, you know, they'll, they'll make up or he'll say, I'm sorry, or he processed or whatever. But now guess what? The it's in somebody else's it's mouth. It's in someone else's mouth. And you spoiled, watch this term, you spoiled the sacredness of, that of the institution. That's right. That's by, right. By doing what you did. And now you gave the report, which ultimately becomes the reputation. Right. To the mouth of someone Else. That, yeah, is interested in their own well-being. And, and when you do that, the Bible says a foolish woman destroys her house with her own hands. Yeah. That someone else doesn't have to tear down your home. Right. That, that um, you will tear it down. Yeah. And, and I just really encourage you right now. I felt that as you're talking. There's so many people in the most practical ways. Yeah. We're, we're going, I want relationship. I want relationship. Yeah. I want healthy. I want this. But we're destroying. And so... Pastor Rick's not using names like Bob and Chris and John that we relate to as easy because right. Old Testament names, but it's the pattern of people's the behavior. Principle being, and the principle is still there. The principle's there. Yeah. And God's word and through this book, you show us really how to build because the first thing that I have to do is this, I won't have real relationship unless I feel, and this is the key word, safe with safe, you. Safe, absolutely. You know, And if I only feel safe because I trust you and that trust comes because there is loyalty. Yeah, and let me say that, take, can I just take it there? Mm -hmm. um, you'd be amazed, it's good for the family, it's good for the church, but it's good for corporations. Oh yeah. You would be amazed at how many corporations have taken this book and made their corporate executives read, read it. it. Yeah. Oh, I? Yeah. So it works for companies. Because here's the thing, language is our locator. Yeah. When people begin to speak against other people, it's like if I hurt somebody on my team, I'm hurting myself. Right. If I hurt somebody in my company, if I hurt somebody, so there might, I, for the sake, which is where you landed here, you landed on succession and unity. Yeah. For the sake of the bigger picture of everything, I have to understand I play a role. This is an, in a family, I play a role. In a church, That's I good. play a role. That's good. In the, I play a role. No one succeeds alone. Right. Never have. God didn't create it that way. That's right. There's an old Jewish idiom that says you can be a single letter in the alphabet or you can be a part of something bigger. Wow. You know, I like and, that. and you are. You're created yeah. for something bigger. And the bigger is that individually why Christ is conforming the character of himself in my individual life, that ultimately I'll look like God, act like God, talk like God, walk like God, create like God. It's for a bigger picture to bring forth the bride of Christ, the body. My individual life is is a part of something bigger. Bigger. And that's, that's where it, it goes, okay, this isn't just about me. Mm -hmm. And relationship is God's design. Right. A really, not only providing for our needs to be met, yeah. but also growing us right. into purpose, yeah. which purpose is ultimately we leave legacy and we've got about two minutes left. You need to get up and call the toll-free number because everything I'm talking about, I learned as I sat under Pastor Rick about legacy, succession, yeah. matriarch, patriarch, sincerely. I've st I had studied it for 27 years. I knew it, but when he came into my life, he helped me organize my thoughts of revelation. Can I encourage someone, Pastor Paul, that may be out, that, that feels like they've been cast out mm -hmm. of the, the inner circle or, um, you know, do, don't be afraid to come back and, and, and make things right, you yeah. know? And I, I think we overlook forgiveness too easy, you know? And if, if we really need to, someone wrote me the other day and said, you know why God gave you forgiveness? So I text back, I said, why? And they said, for you to use. <laughs> it's, it's the truth, isn't it? It's forgiveness is sitting right there, and we walk right by it every day. That's good. And so I think we can reconcile relationships very quickly just by forgiving. Boy, that's good. Yeah, and um, then we can activate 
the principle of Nehemiah. Nehemiah never said what you was just talking about, teamwork, corporate mindsets. Um, Nehemiah never said, I will. He never said those words. We. He said, let us. us. And he knew what it would take to get that wall rebuilt. Because he does in 52 days. Through relationship. Through relationship, what they cannot accomplish in over 100 years. Right. Exactly. Pastor Rick, I can't say thank you enough. Oh, There's my not privilege. It's been anyone fun. more, and you say qualified through experience, and I understand that, and qualified through the combination of revelation and experience. I want you to get up and call the toll free number right now and get inner circle the value of friendship, trust, and influence. You are going to get incredible teaching on things like the power of next influence, the power of agreement, covenant, our brother, where are thou, friendship, life in a cave, brokenness, facing the battle, courage, following the king, purpose, uh, processing, possessing your territory, determination, along with my four CD series on creating healthy relationships. It's the life skill and the tool. And listen, at the end of the day, that's what we really want. Am I significant? Am I safe? Um, do I have a place that I belong? family, church, community, yes. and let me find my fit in life. And that's what the currency of the kingdom's all that's about, right. is relationship. It's yeah. their network yeah. that determines your net worth. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Pastor. Awesome. Thank you. God has a perfect plan for your life and a role for you in His kingdom. But to attain your destiny, you need the help of godly co-workers and loved ones. Now discover the steps to developing solid relationships you can trust in Pastor Rick Hawkins' insightful book, The Inner Circle. A friend will love you at all times, but you really don't know who your brothers are until you go through adverse seasons. Learn to access the power of next through covenant relationships when you order Pastor Rick Hawkins' book, The Inner Circle. Plus, also receive Pastor Paula White's life-transforming four-CD series, Creating Healthy Relationships, both for your ministry gift of $25 or more. Call toll-free, write to Paula White Ministries or log on to paulawhite.org and discover the keys to creating a godly inner circle of people in your life today. Connect with Paula White on her website at paulawhite.org. Instantly watch an archive of Paula's shows. Visit Paula's online store. And you can easily get today's message in its entirety by clicking on the MP3 download button. Paula wants to read your praise reports and testimonials. And she wants to pray for you. So visit paulawhite.org and connect with a ministry that is making an impact throughout the world. It's just one click away. All here at paulawhite.org.